G'day guys, welcome back to another episode where we're restoring a 46 foot steel sailboat. So this week we really want to get into getting that bow finished. We keep doing little bits here or there and uh, it'd be nice just to get that one done. So we're going to plow into that today. We're going to uh, first weld a bracket in and then we're going to sand everything and prep it for paint. I'm going to sandblast the two triangular pieces, paint them and then we're going to weld them in. And then uh, any bits that have been altered by the heat from the welding and the splatter. We're going to touch them up, fix them up, paint them and we should be all done from there. So let's get stuck into the work, see how far I get. Thanks guys. I just want to potter along with a few other jobs so I'm going to look at installing the bracket down in this corner here so I've sandblasted the bracket I linished all the corners and tightened tidied it up a fair bit uh, doesn't look so bad now So I just welded this bracket in. So I went a bit overboard with the welder and I put a few too many runs on, but I've ground them back a bit uh, just to get a little bit of the beefy weld off. It's pretty pretty chunky weld, but um, got one up the top, one on the bottom, same as the other side. No welds on the inside, because if I ever want to come in here, I can just cut that with my helicopter grinder and then uh, remove that plate if I ever need to. I may never need to, but I want it easy if I ever do. Um, so that bracket's in. Next step is to prepare the surface here for painting. And then we can uh, put the two triangular pieces on top and then we're all done and get it all welded up. So that's uh, our next step for the bow here. Getting closer. I've just flipped the nylon bush around the right way and pushed this in. So that spring is supposed to push on that nylon bush. And then when there's too much pressure, uh, that spring uh, will release its tension and uh, that nylon will allow the air to escape through this little hole here. So it should be fine the way it is. And you set your pressure by screwing this down further until the further you screw it down the more pressure you'll be able to get to because uh, there's more tension on that spring requires more force to push that nylon bush off of its seat um, and then when you've got the pressure right that you want you then lock it up with this lock nut uh, so I don't know what it's set to now I'm just gonna have to do it through trial and error 
Um, so if it gets too high, um, I want it around the 125 uh, psi. If it gets further than that, um, then I've got to screw this down further and lock it up. So the only way to find out is to turn it on and see what pressure I get. Well, I've already spent a few hours sanding today and uh, got all the high spots off. I've already tested to make sure that this coating, this undercoat that's on here already, is adhered to the substrate correctly. And uh, we're just about finished sanding. I've got a little bit left to do between this stiffener here. And uh, then I'm going to give it a wash down, give it a wipe with some acetone and we'll put a tie coat on here before we put a bilge coat on here as well. So I've just uh, done most of the sanding. I'm gonna to have to give it a pressure wash now. Wash all this stuff out of the drain there. It's probably a little bit more sanding to do down there. And then we'll give it a coat of tie coat. Just spend a little bit of time thinking about what I want to do with this little hiccup we found. So, what it appears is that down here, this floor is just been poured with resin. So they welded in these drains and then they've wanted the water level, I'm assuming, to be the same level as the top of these drains. So they've just poured resin in the bottom of this sump here so that the water goes straight down these drains I'm not too keen on that idea because that means I'll never be able to inspect the steel underneath this resin I want to be able to get in anywhere and be able to inspect the hull at any time there's a fair bit of corrosion down here and in these welds where had a lot of crap built in so I think instead of losing all the work I've done today because I'm gonna to have to stop and address this corrosion and uh, this resin in here I will paint all this give it a tie coat so it doesn't rust any further um, and then I'll get down here upside down and chisel out all this resin sand it up and then paint this uh, it may mean that I may not get the two pieces on top of the bilge done today but uh, we'll still try and get that done as soon as I can but uh, you always find a problem here or there but uh, this has to be dealt with I'm not happy with leaving uh, the resin in here and I don't know the condition underneath it 
we've got a lot of rust that's been uncovered after we took all that rubbish at the bottom so this uh, resin hasn't done the trick So this is going to take a little bit more effort than I was hoping But uh, this bow job is the job that just keeps giving This is probably another reason why they just should have made these drains a lot better uh, so even though they tried to fill up with resin, if like the steel swells at a different rate than the resin, well it's going to create a little gap between the two and the water's going to get down. And they should have just made these drains flush with the bottom of that um, bottom of the hull. Uh, so the water just goes straight out instead of thinking, all right, well I'll make the drains come up and then put a resin on the bottom I'm assuming they thought that this was going to be a chain locker and they didn't want a little wedge uh, for a chain to get stuck in so that they put a little bit of a flat bottom on here to make it better for the chain but it's not better for the boat so this is going to be a bit of a big job so I don't see me welding those plates on uh, but I will try and put a coat of paint on the good bits so that I don't lose all this nice sand that I've done and then uh, then we'll attack this uh, rusted bottom bit now, I don't know whether or not I'm going to blast it um, my blasters might not be strong enough for the resin but I'll chisel it all out and then blast it it's going to be a bit of work so, might as well get started. So I thought I'd share a little bit of information with you. After you bl blast something and you want to work out what the profile is, um, so each paint that you use will have a different manufacturer specification on the profile that's required so that that paint would adhere to the substrate. So to work out what your um, profile is the easiest way is to get some test x tape so this test x tape it's basically a sticker on the back of the sticker is some memory foam so once compressed that memory foam will keep the shape of whatever it's compressed to so this particular one can measure anywhere between 38 microns to 115 microns of profile uh, different tapes can measure different thicknesses uh, this is one I have and um, basically all you need to do is put it on your substrate get something blunt like a key would work fine then you can press that little foam pad into the peaks and troughs of your profile here you peel that off and then generally you would uh, put this bit of tape under a micrometer and measure the thickness um, now to measure it properly what you have to do is measure it then minus 50 micron because the, the thickness of the sticker plus the compression of the um, foam pad equals 50 micron it's just a standard for this tape and then whatever it is above 50 micron is what the the peaks and troughs of your uh, your profile finishes up at. So I've already measured what I've blasted heaps of times and I've forgotten my micrometer so I can't show you me measuring it. But basically my blaster gives me 110 micron profile. Uh, that's with me using crushed shot garnet so it's basically uh, balls of steel that have been crushed into sharp um, pieces and that gets 
thrown at this and ricochets off leaving an indentation of 110 micron. Uh, you can get lower profiles if you use just garnet, if that's a pinky crushed rock. Um, that will give you around 50 to 70 micron profile. But uh, my, the paints that I'm using on my boat require a higher profile, so I use crushed shot. Um, so I get 110 micron, uh, that's what I need. Uh, but if you ever read your manufacturer's specifications and they tell you you need X amount of profile for your paint to adhere to the substrate, um, get some Testex tape. Uh, here in Australia, you can buy this from Blast One. Uh, in America, you can purchase it from NACE. Um, I don't know other countries, but any Blast contractor will be able to sell you some Testex tape. Um, and that's how you're going to tell if you've got enough profile on your substrate for your paint to adhere to properly. So there's uh, there's one bit of trivia. One thing to keep in mind when you're painting too is the type of paint that you have. Um, so this is a 57% uh, solid, 54% solid paint. So that means it's got uh, like a thinner solvent based material mixed through it. Generally make it easier to spread and easier to apply, especially if you're spraying. Um, so to get the best performance out of this paint, it needs to be a minimum of 100 microns thick. Um, this is not 100 microns at the moment, but one way to check it is you can get what's called a uh, wet film thickness comb. It's basically a little square, has a whole bunch of um, indentations on uh, how thick that little stub is on them, and that'll uh, be able to plunge it into your wet paint and uh, tell you how thick your paint is while it's wet. Um, so basically, you, your paint will evaporate so as it's driving the solvent will evaporate out of the paint and you've got to keep in mind that if this is 57% solid um, that gives you 43% solvents um, so your thickness of your paint is going to uh, reduce by about 40% um, so if I want this to be 100 micron I need to be painting it at 170 micron give or take um, so that once it dries uh, it will shrink down to approximately 100 micron uh, so I'm going to put another layer on this uh, I'll just wait till it gets a bit tacky and then I'll paint another layer on and that'll get me around the 170 microns thick um, but yeah just keep in mind um, you might think you've the manufacturer recommends 100 micron you, you're going to put 0.1 of a mil all over it but if you did that, you're only going to have about half of what you need and uh, that could be a problem for you. The camera overheated, but uh, while I was waiting for it to cool down, I put a coat of paint in here. So it's looking a lot nicer. It's good to finally see me making the boat looking better instead of uh, cutting it up and making it look worse. So I have left a strip of weld going down there into the bottom and a strip this side and I haven't painted the bottom. Those are bits I'm going to put some more attention into and I'm going to strip them back to bare metal and dig out all that um, resin in the bottom and then drill holes right in the bottom of this into those uh, drains that he's made uh, so that all the water can get out right down to the bottom uh, that's going to be a big job it's going to take a few hours to get all that done and i'm going to need different tooling um, so i've not painted that yet uh, we'll address that then we'll paint it then i'm going to weld the top plates on uh, and then we'll give them a paint too. So 
getting closer to finishing it. Let's see if I can uh, come back another day and get some more work done. So I'm back at the boat again today. I want to get down into that bilge and try and chisel out all the resin. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm going to give it a go. The sun's starting to set, so before it got too dark, I thought I'd uh, show everyone what I've found so far. All this out of out of the little pit there. So I've got the coating on top here, and there's a little coating of resin sort of on top of that, which you can sort of peel off, and it's sort of like a clear reddish uh, resin. But then underneath that is this rubbery sort of uh, cement compound. Don't quite know what that is. Um, so it's like a, a cement, a concrete based substance, but very light. It's got no weight to it. It's a little bit elastic. So it's got me thinking maybe it's like plaster of Paris or something. Um, so it seems that on the substrate down here and the bottom there's been no painting there's no coating they've just poured the concrete or plaster straight on the uh, bare metal there so as you can see that plaster has been sitting up against the bare metal with no coating in between it so they've used the concrete substance whatever it is as the corrosion protection uh, but I'm as I can feel this it's actually wet it's been soaking in the moisture um, so this is this is pretty bad um, so I've got most of it out but she's uh, had a bit of metal loss uh, it's not gonna alter the integrity of the boat um, but I may ultra ultrasound uh, do an ultrasonic thickness test on this part of the boat just to make sure but um, as you can see still a little bit to get down in the bottom uh, but that was a really bad move by whoever did that but I'm glad I got all that concrete out so I'm going to have to dig a little bit more out. It would be nice if I had a uh, like a pneumatic air chisel or um, like a pneumatic chisel to just go at it really quickly. I uh, don't have one with me, um, so I'm just using bits of chisels and steel that I found lying around. Dig it all out, and then I'm going to have to bring the blaster up here and blast that metal uh, and then undercoat it properly. And then I'm going to have to bring an uh, ultrasonic thickness tester up here and uh, I'll, I'll have to test the thickness of that part. It's the only major piece of rust that I've seen, even though I reckon I've only lost about a mil of uh, thickness there out of a six mil plate. So that's still fine over a small area. I'm not going to be too concerned, but I want to measure it. I want to make sure. So it's going to take a little bit more work to get this, um, all this crap out and get it right um, and then blast it and paint it uh, so got a little bit more work to do here but that's it for today because it's very windy it's cold and I'm running out of light so uh, that's it for today and uh, we'll get back to this uh, sometime through the week